Hello guys, I'm back with an update on my reinforcement learning game. I'm going to give an overview about using self-play in ML agents to train competitive AI and the challenges I faced to get it right. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos in this series, I'll suggest you to go check them first before jumping into this one. But anywho, if you're all caught up, let's begin. First. I added another discrete action to the player for allowing it to shoot bullets. Bullets fired while jumping have a lower speed while bullets fired close to the ground are faster. I also added a cooldown period between each shot so that the agents can't spam it on every step. Finally, I duplicated the environment, shifted it, flipped it on the x-axis and voila, I now have two players. In the final game, we will have one player as the AI and the other as the human player. But as we are developing, I'm going to train the AI in a competitive environment using an algorithm called self-play. Self-play is a training approach where the agents learn by playing against different versions of itself in a competitive environment to improve over time. Multi-agent reinforcement learning is an inherently more difficult problem than single agent RL because the behavior and rewards observed by each agent is influenced not only by its own actions but also by the other agents in the environment. How self-play tries to solve this problem is by providing each agent a copy of the same policy network but keeping the weights fixed or frozen for one agent and train the other agent's policy network with any standard DRL algorithm such as PPO. After a specific number of training steps have passed, the most recent snapshot of this training model is saved into a fixed size circular queue. We get to choose the total number of recent snapshots to keep in the queue by adjusting the window parameter and the number of steps after a new model is saved by adjusting the save steps parameter. After a fixed interval of steps configured by the swap steps parameter, this frozen model is replaced by another model from this window. In other words, the model just keeps playing against latest versions of itself and once it finishes a certain number of steps, it adds its own copy as a future competitor for itself. Cool, right? Playing against recent versions of the model means the network trains to defeat opponents of the same skill level. A roughly equal skill level also adds a flavor of curriculum learning into the agent's training where it progressively faces harder challenges and learns to overcome them. Maybe this generation was an aggressive shooter. Maybe this one learned to shoot bullets while it's jumping. So when the latest model is trained against opponents of diverse strategies, it trains to learn a robust and generalizable policy that can compete against the multiple playstyles. Since my game is a symmetrical game, I want to train a shared policy for these two agents. The action space should also be the same. If the go left action makes this agent go left, it should actually make the other agent go right. The coordinate space effectively is where the center is at the origin and the two extremes both go to plus one. They are basically mirrors of each other. For the observation space, I trained with a multitude of options, including a fully vectorized one, an image-based one, but the one that trained the best with an acceptable computational overhead was a combination of vector observation and ray cast perception 2D. Ray cast sensors are LiDAR-like rays to detect objects in the game, which provides a better spatial representation than using purely vector observations. I use the ray sensors with three detectable tags to track the opponent, ground and the opponent's bullets. I also stack three observations so the agent can understand the dynamics of the environment like how fast the bullets are coming or if the opponent is jumping up or falling down or running towards or away from him. For an easier training target, I also stopped flipping the agent 
so that the sensor's relative ray ordering remains constant and the neural network does not have to learn the relationship between the sensor ray ordering and the player's facing direction. To include other non-spatial information, I use vector observations which included things like its velocity, time since the last bullet was fired, if it's crouching, dashing, jumping, etc. An episode terminates whenever an agent dies, the loser gets a negative one reward and the winner gets a positive one reward. Agents can die either by falling down the ramp, getting hit by the opponent's bullet or if it does not shoot a bullet within a specific window of time. Forcing the agent to shoot bullets after regular intervals means that the agent is incentivized to be aggressive and not be a chicken. The resulting model did its job, but the games were kind of boring. The two dudes just crouched and kept shooting and simply dashed through the incoming bullets. So I added a couple of twists. First, I disallowed firing when the agent is crouching, forcing it to explore other actions in order to shoot. Second, I noticed that the AI almost rarely jumps, which probably means that it saw a lot of negative experiences when trying to jump. So I made it more powerful by increasing the jump force that gets the agent high above the ground much faster and also decreased the hang time so it fell down faster as well. So the jump is less floaty, less dangerous and more powerful and indeed after I retrained, I was much happier with the results because the agent definitely uses the jump way more and moves around a lot as well. This led to more dynamic matches between the two agents. It's just fascinating how complex behavior emerged so naturally in simple environments when self-play is involved. By the way, if you are enjoying these devlogs and the other content on my channel, please consider subscribing. I am very new to YouTube, so your likes and comments helps the channel grow way more than you think and I truly appreciate your time. In the next devlog, I am probably going to add more depth into the game by playing with difficulty settings, balancing and some playtesting with human versus AI components. I am thinking of releasing this game on itch.io after adding a bit of polish if anyone following the devlog wants to play it for themselves. But that's it for this video, you've been magnificent.